Christians all over the world, especially our Filipino brothers who are working in diaspora, those who are in other countries and have not come home for many years and might not know our conditions in the Philippines nowadays. We have now the EWETVN Philippines, which is Emmanuel TV Network, and therefore we are happy we can communicate with you now wherever you are. Alam po ninyo, mga kababayan sa ibang bansa na naghihirap upang buhayin ang kanilang mga pamilya at mga kabag-anak dito sa Pilipinas. We appreciate your work and your hardships, the hardships that you are undergoing in other countries. Although you must also know na naghihirap din ang mga kamag-anak ninyo rito at ang buong uh, Pilipinas dahil nga sa pandemic, meron tayo ngayong pamamaraan na uh, naisagawa ang ETVN Philippines. Kaya nga, sana ugaliin ninyo ang uh, manood dito sa istasyong ito sapagkat uh, ito ay para sa inyo, lalong-lalo niya sa inyong mga pangailangang espiritual na maaaring uh, hindi ninyo natatanggap sa kinaroroonan ninyo ngayon. Pag-uusapan natin ngayon, ay kung paano maging maligaya, masaya, in spite of the many hardships that we are undergoing all over the world because of the pandemic, the stress that you feel because of, of uh, your separation from your families, your children, and your relatives, and our dear Philippines. And so, ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon ay yung pong kung papaano maging maligaya, nakikiisa sa Diyos kahit na nasa gitna tayo ng kahirapan at pangangailangan. Many Christians can name the Ten Commandments and the Apostles' Creed and many more. But do we have a knowledge of the Beatitudes? Have you heard of the Beatitudes, which is Christ's advice how to be happy in spite of everything, our difficulties. The Beatitudes are a set of teachings and blessings that Jesus gave in the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. The messages found in the Beatitudes describe the foundation of the Christian faith. The purpose of the Beatitudes is to inspire Christians to live according to the traits Jesus describes. Some of these acts are simple, some are grand, but they all form the cornerstone of the ideal Christian lifestyle. Therefore, living out the Beatitudes examples is very important 
for all Christians and in fact for everybody whatever their religion and so when Jesus saw the crowds he went up the mountain and after he had sat down his disciples came to him he began to teach them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be satisfied blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy blessed are the clean of heart for they will see god blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of god blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven brothers and sisters we have just listened to the beginning of Jesus's first homily in those few verses he sums up all his teaching on how to live life to the full the beatitudes as that list of statements is called are as fundamental for Christ's teaching as the Ten Commandments were for Moses' teaching. It's one of the eight Beatitudes is phrased in the same way, a very curious way. First, Jesus says, Blessed are. And then, he names a special type of suffering. The first thing to note in this construction is the word blessed, two syllables. This is one of the most important words in the Bible. It is always used to refer to the fullness of life that comes only to those who follow God. The Greek word used for it in the New Testament is makarios. That word comes from the name of an island that the ancient Greeks considered to be a perfect paradise. The people who lived on that island were completely self-sufficient. They had no need to depend on outside sources for prosperity since the island was so perfectly situated and perfectly endowed. And this is the impression that the word blessed should give us. The kind of happiness that is so strong and stable that not even the storms and sufferings of life in the world can shake. The deep interior sense of joy and meaning that we all long to experience because we were created, we were made to experience them. 
But the amazing thing about these Beatitudes, my dear brothers and sisters, the ones Jesus teaches is where they say this perfect blessedness can be found. They say that we can experience it on earth. Each time Jesus says, blessed are, blessed are you. But that experience can only come if our hearts are set on heaven, on Christ's kingdom, on friendship with God. If we want anything else more than that, like food, wealth, fame, honor, power, praise, if we set our hearts on those things, we will not experience the blessedness that Christ wants to give us. But as soon as we accept the hard reality that earth will never be heaven, that nothing on earth can fulfill our heart's desire completely, that we will always experience limitations like hunger, humiliation, sorrow, temptation, and injustice. In other words, as soon as we accept fully that this life is a journey to a fuller life, then we will begin to experience that fuller life in part, even here and now along the journey. And so, brothers and sisters, this is exactly what we mean by the Christian virtue and the Beatitudes. The assurance that if we stay united to Christ here on earth, we will experience fulfillment, blessedness, more and more until we are filled completely in heaven. As the Pope says in his encyclical, present society is recognized by Christians as an exile. Christians belong to a new society which is the goal of their common pilgrimage and which is anticipated in the course of that pilgrimage. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, as Christians, we actually know where true happiness is to be found in our friendship with Christ, in following Him through this life into perfect communion with him and all the saints in heaven. And so Jesus began his first homily in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, chapter 5, with this shining word, Blessed, blessedness, is the biblical word for vibrant, lasting happiness. God blesses us, and we receive his blessing, and our lives take on the vitality and meaning they were meant to have. To be blessed is to live in the light of God's love and from the power of God's wisdom. All the philosophers and founders of religions throughout human history have sought the path to blessedness. 
though they have at times used different words. It is a universal human desire to be blessed, to live life to the full now and forever. Whenever we ask for a blessing or give a blessing, it is this we pray for, that God may touch our hearts and minds in a new, fresh way so that our lives can grow in all that truly matters and that fully satisfies. Christianity, our religion, the only fully true religion, is built on God's desire to fulfill our desire to live a blessed life. May God be praised for opening the gates for us to blessedness. Jesus alludes to the golden rule of loving others as yourself in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Mercy is an important characteristic in the Bible and is mentioned many times, such as in Luke chapter 6, verse 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Anytime someone truly forgives another, mercy is shown. To have mercy is to show compassion and love to one another. This is essentially the golden rule of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We want to be the kind of people who lift our fingers to help others, to feed, to fill with them, to put ourselves in their shoes so that we can understand what their burdens feel like. So our hearts need to feel real empathy. We are Pharisees when we look upon other sins or lack of faith and judge them. We are Christ's for others when we put judgment of others aside, pray for them, listen to them, accompany them, and strive to lift their burdens. The fifth category of the Beatitude is happy are they who are merciful. This one, I think we can understand pretty well because we still use the word mercy today. What does it mean to be merciful? Well, it means to forgive others' faults, to forgive others' sins, even when they don't deserve it. And in fact, especially when they do not deserve it. That's the quintessential aspect of mercy. And so 
what Jesus is saying here is that people who are merciful are happy because they shall obtain mercy from God. They shall be forgiven by God even when they don't deserve it. The Beatitudes then that uh, we are discussing now are a sign of contradiction to the world's way of happiness. And probably we also commit the same fault that uh, real happiness is found in the world and worldly ambitions. The Beatitudes a sign of contradiction to the world's way of happiness. The Beatitudes which offers us are a sign of contradiction to the world's understanding of happiness and joy. So for the worldly, the Beatitudes, the remedy of Jesus Christ for obtaining real happiness, they are not understood and they contradict the happiness and joy that the world offers us. How, according to the world, how can one possibly find happiness in poverty, in hunger, in mourning, and persecution? Well, poverty of spirit finds ample room and joy in possessing God as the greatest treasure possible. Hunger of the spirit seeks nourishment and strength in God's word and spirit. Brothers and sisters, Many of us have tried to look for happiness in many things and in many ways. And you know the result. We usually fail to find happiness where we want to find them. Why should we not try Jesus' way of obtaining happiness and Jesus' way of obtaining real happiness is the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, lalong lalo na ang mga kababayan natin sa ibang bansa Alam natin na kailangan-kailangan ng inyong mga, ating mga familia, mga kapatid, mga kamag-anak, mga relatives na may sakit, lalong-lalo na during this pandemic, napakarami na nang namatay, napakarami na nang naghihirap, napakarami na nang nagastos ng lahat, ang naipon, sa mga hospital, sa mga doktor, sa mga gamot. And we appreciate what you are doing in other countries and sending some of your earnings to the Philippines, to your relatives and friends. We appreciate that. We are happy about that. But then, I would want to remind you also that it is not enough. We have also to turn to God. And what better way 
Can we turn to God but the way of the Beatitudes? I hope that from now on we shall also try to find true happiness by being merciful, by being useful to society, by avoiding all the crimes that we read about every day. My dear brothers and sisters, there is only one way to real happiness. It is the way of the Beatitudes. And now that you may learn the way or to, the re, to, the, to real happiness and joy, I would want to bless you, to give you my blessing that you remember always to be merciful. It is one of the ways of the Beatitudes. And so, the Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.